It is time now with the Sports Guys. I'm joined by Larry on the night of the NBA Finals Game 2. Game 2 is in the books between the Golden State Warriors and the Toronto Raptors. What changed the Warriors in the second half in their comeback? Was it the Warriors' offense making shots or the Warriors' defense limiting the Raptors' offense? It was, in my opinion, the Warriors' defense limiting the Raptors' <laughs> offense. I mean, first of all, what was it, an 18-0 run to start yeah. the third quarter? Yeah. How amazing was that? But for me... Like Draymond said, it was transition defense yeah. by the Warriors, but I also feel it was their defense in the paint. They really limited their scoring, Toronto scoring, in the paint. They only had 16 points in the paint in the second half compared to 28 in the first half, so I think that was key as well. And to show you how their defense really worked, I believe uh, Raptors only had like seven turnovers for the entire first half. They had more than that in the third quarter, and again, that was fueling the transition offense for the Warriors. Yep. Would an NBA championship for the Raptors keep Kawhi Leonard in Toronto? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to think about that one that much. No, I mean, you know, maybe he might be like, oh, you know, yeah, this is kind of cool. And, I, and Toronto's a cool city as well, so there's a lot to like there. But I think we all agree that yeah. he wants to get back to California. He wants to go back to California, more than likely the Clippers. And, of course, Doc Rivers being fined $50,000 when he compared Kawhi to Michael, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, And yeah. so <laughs> they said that's tampering and you can't do that. All right. What do you think of Kawhi giving credit to his former teammates, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker for keeping his cool in the Raptors run for their first ever NBA title? You know, I think it's pretty cool myself. And <clears throat> if I recall, it's the first time since he has left town that he's really mentioned any of the Spurs by name. I mean, he yes. could have done it somewhere else, and I just didn't hear it. But I feel like it's the first time. And I think that's pretty cool when he was asked, you know, how do you keep cool and calm? You don't really show your emotions on the court. And he's like, well, it started my rookie year when I started guarding the best players and then going up against Tim, Tony, and Manu in practice and just watching how they handled themselves. I really thought it was pretty cool. A lot of Spurs fans are fired up because they did it. You know, a lot of people still calling him a traitor and whatnot, but I had no problem with that. I think it's really cool he did it. Well, and I thought by giving his former teammates credit helped kind of smooth things over a little bit because not everybody thought yeah. he left on best terms with his teammates anyway. Yeah. So by doing that, I think it sees him trying to build a bridge back to that memorable, memorable time for him yeah. in the 13 and the 14 uh, NBA Finals. Yep. Does Cowboy star running back Ezekiel Elliott get suspended again for the incident in Las Vegas where he knocked down a security guard that was caught on camera? I don't think he gets suspended, but I think indeed the Cowboys and the NFL will talk to him and say, dude, listen, when you're out there, anything you do, somebody's going to probably get it with their camera phone. Nowadays, yeah. You know, and they're going to post it. So just behave. Don't be dumb. You know, and uh, from what I read, it all started because he didn't want to walk, I don't know, an extra 10, 15 feet around a gate. fencing, right. Just, mm. just walk around the gate. I mean, you're not entitled just to cut through there. No one else would be able to. Well, and what are you doing out at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> you know, yeah. you're a professional athlete. Yeah. You've had some problems in the past that got you suspended. What are you doing out at 3 o'clock in the morning, especially in Las Vegas, of all places? What did you tell me years ago? Your mom or your dad used to tell you, Something after. nothing good happens after midnight. See, there <laughs> nothing you go. good happens. After Come on, midnight. Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to update that now to say 2 a.m. But back in the day, it was midnight. <laughs> after what happened in the Astros Cubs game where a little girl was hit by a foul ball, should Major League Baseball require more protective netting for their fans? Absolutely. And I know a lot of people don't like this. They feel it just kind of interferes with the game a little bit. But I mean, come on, how many more adults, kids are going to have to get hurt by a a foul ball. I think there's nothing wrong with putting nets farther down, you know, uh, the left field line or the right field line. And I think they should do it because, uh, and that's just, that's dangerous. I mean, you're there, you're not always paying attention. You know, right. you should, but a you little don't. kid doesn't know any nope. better. And even sometimes adults, you're talking with your family, your friends, you're having a good time. You know, so I, I think adding netting would be smart. I would always tell young reporters, you're doing a live shot at a baseball park. Heads up, head on a swivel, because you just don't know somebody's going to miss the throw, yep. foul ball. Even in batting practice, it can be rough. So yep. just keep your eyes on the field so you know what's coming after you. Because you sometimes you don't see it. There's a great video that I see on social media where one of the players is being interviewed. And you see, and I don't know if it's true or not, you see the ball curving towards a little reporter who's out. And he reaches up and snags that other yeah. Now, I don't know if that's true, yeah. but that just goes to show you got to really keep your head up. Yep. All right, and that does it for the sports guys.